Hello, and thank you for watching. This brief five-minute message is directed to Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of the State of Israel, and Chief Justice Asha Grunas, the President of the Supreme Court of Israel. Gentlemen, as a passionate, dedicated and committed Jew, I address the two of you about an issue that is arguably the most important in the Jewish world today, the land of the State of Israel. Specifically referring to the upcoming August 28th hearing in the Israeli Supreme Court concerning the fate of the community of Migron. The fate of Migron is so important to me that I, together with an international group of like-minded Jews, issued a petition we called Save Migron, which attracted over 5,000 signatures from 40 countries. Migron today is a secure and peaceful community of 300 souls with thriving educational, religious and commercial establishments. The land on which Migron was established was originally identified as no man's land and was recently legally bought and paid for, so there can be no question about the legality of the ownership. The key question in the Migron case is simply this, is there any proof or evidence that the land legally belongs to someone else? If not, then clearly there is no basis for uprooting and expelling this government-sanctioned community and demolishing their homes. You may look at me, an Orthodox Jew, and presume exactly what I think, or what I want to say, but the unique and individual case of Migron is an exception to these presumed stereotype positions. I'm not going to talk to you about Halakha or Torah, even though I personally believe them. I'm going to base this message purely on hard facts and legal evidence. For a start, the choice of Migron as a place to settle wasn't made in the usual way by the usual suspects. In fact, the Israeli government itself, under Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, made the decision in 1999 to build and settle on the rocky hilltop of Migron and also approved 500 building sites. There were two main reasons for this. The first was security. Migron is a hilltop location giving a secure and uninterrupted view of the approach road to Binyamin, Route 60. Allow me to remind you that Ariel Sharon himself classified Migron as a strategic outpost that would not be evacuated in any scenario, including militarily. The second factor was the site now called Migron was chosen because historically it had always been empty, unfarmed and unowned and that no claims had ever been made on the site of the land by the local Arab Palestinians from the time of the Jordanian occupation through to the current court action. In fact, the only parcel of land in the area known to have been developed and thus was deliberately left untouched was outside the boundaries of Migron. Yes, there have been cases in the past where for one reason or another the court has decided that it would be legally correct to uproot and expel Jewish residents from their homes and destroy communities. But that is not the case here. In this instance and in this location in Migron, a lawful community built on unowned and unclaimed land at the direction of the state's own agencies and ministries should have the full support of natural justice as well as the law and the highest court of the land. Let me repeat, no evidence of Arab ownership at Migron has ever been presented or found to exist. Recent history has also shown us that withdrawing from Jewish communities in places such as Gush Katif has not led to peace or greater harmony. In fact, over 10,000 missiles have been fired into southern Israel since the unilateral disengagement of Gush Katif in 2005. Ironically, the community of Migron is uniquely characterised by the harmony between its Jewish residents and their Arab neighbours. For example, shopping side by side at the local supermarket. If anything, this aspect of life in the Migron community shows that the way forward may just be through leaving the residents of Migron where they are, so they can continue their peaceful coexistence with their neighbours, rather than remove established, peaceful, successful Jewish communities from parts of Eretz Israel like Yehuda and Shomron. In other words, gentlemen, a peaceful coexistence already exists. Expelling Jews will not create more harmony. The deeply disturbing historical lesson learned from previous expulsions and destruction of Jewish communities 
has been that it has brought more terror, more missiles, more violence and much less peace and security. Mr Prime Minister Netanyahu and Mr Chief Justice Grunas, please make the right decision, the moral decision and the peaceful decision. Let Migron stay. The government's first duty is to protect its country and its citizens, not appease the politicians and the citizens of other countries. No other country would put the interests of other countries over its own. Just imagine if America or Britain were Israel, would they ever kick out citizens from a part of their own country because Mexico or some European country wanted to do so? Israel will always be criticised, no matter what. That is part of being a Jewish state. Even if Israel stops the building and expansion of communities in Judea and Samaria, the critics will still criticise her about lack of progress in the peace process and demand of her to make still more concessions to the Arab Palestinians. They will always find a pretext to fault Israel. Israel was criticised before 1967 despite the fact that Israel had no presence in the West Bank. Thank you from me and countless thousands like me who love and want to protect all our land. Join us. Let Migron stay.